What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Brother Tariq Nasheed had uh, a Twitter space the other day, and there is a guy who came into the Twitter space by the name of Dr. Davinsky. This guy is a Tariq Nasheed troll. And Dr. Davinsky considers himself a foundational white Australian. Now, again, I don't know why these particular individuals uh, want to come into a Twitter space that's not for them. But unfortunately, these things happen. And this is a particular white man who is um, in a relationship with a mixed woman. The woman is half African and half Australian. OK, but now I want basically you to hear the question that he's going to ask Tariq Nasheed. Well, you know, she was basically saying that maybe you could learn from the foundational black British that have 10 times the lower homicide rate, greater educational attainment. And she's curious, like, what what is holding back black Americans today when people from these third world countries can come over and excel? Excel where? In education, Nigerian Americans, for instance, most master's degree, degrees per capita, higher household incomes. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of anti Teva uh, babble that you do. And why don't you, uh, you know, look up to the Tevas and wow, these, these are, you, you may be foundational black Americans, but you could also look at them kind of as role models. Well, the thing is, just because they're non FBA, that doesn't make them a Teva. I'm, I'm very congratulatory to some of our Nigerian brothers and sisters who get their education game popping, more power to them. When they come here and try to say what you're saying, that's tetherish because you over here because we made a lane for you. So that's a different thing. Um, the real issue is um, you and them birth rates, Dr. Davinsky, and you getting you a bed wench, are you trying to save them white supremacist genes because you couldn't find a a white woman with stronger genes to help you? All right, so basically the question is, how come, you know, you black Americans um, are not doing the same things that uh, Nigerian Americans are doing, uh, some of these other groups who are successful are doing, okay? And this is not uncommon um, from people to say about blacks. Um, even Nick Fuentes commented on it also. You know, when they go and commit the crime, the black mayor gets up and he says, you know, well, they're they're not a mob. They're kids. They're teenagers and so on. And, but you know what it is? What I what I think I I think I cracked the code on why they don't see it the same way that we do. Mm -hmm. Black people do have a chip on their shoulder in the yeah. country. They think that and it's true. Their average income, wealth, education mm -hmm. is lower than white people, yeah. persistently for generations. Mm -hmm. 60 years after the Civil Rights Act, 60 years after the uh, the Voting Rights Act. And they say, how is it that these disparities continue to exist? They blame it on racism. Exactly. And they say the only reason is because the white man's keeping us down, or they say the persistent effects of the white man keeping them down in the past. Mm -hmm. It's because of the, you know, they didn't have generational wealth, whatever. And so yeah. when they see the uh, property crimes, the violent crimes, there's almost like a sick form of they think it's like white people getting their just desserts. They see yep. white people in their, their beautiful society and in these rich neighborhoods, and they kind of see the pillaging and the marauding, and they say, well, good. You know, mm -hmm. because the black people, you know, they've been oppressed for so long— it's time for the white people to suffer a little bit. But, you know, that's actually not conducive mm -hmm. to having an orderly society. On the contrary, rather, I think they should look at white people as an example or Asians or any other group mm -hmm. that is, you know, doesn't have the same dysfunction rather than have that resentment based politics, which is this kind of malicious envy, malicious resentment where they say, you know, we don't have a good. So we're going to smile when we make it bad for everybody else. We're going to smile when things fall apart. That's a very destructive and non-productive mentality. So I think that's why they do that. I couldn't agree more. And I saw a lot of that living in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not. I saw this particular YouTube page called Black Excellent Excellence. Okay. And it's called Nigerian Americans. Why are they the most successful immigrants in the United States? The first thing I want to talk about is education. One, education above everything. 
In the U.S., Nigerians are the most highly educated of all immigrants. Education is paramount in Nigerian households and is an essential part of the Nigerian community. Nigerians hold the belief that the best inheritance that a parent can give to their children is not material things, but it is a good education. So what we find is that the Nigerian diaspora throughout the U.S. and the rest of the world are a highly educated populace, with a large proportion of the Nigerian diaspora members holding bachelor's or advanced degrees. And when Nigerian-American professionals enter into the workforce, it's almost a 50% chance that they will land a job in education services. And then they're going to talk about something which is very important, brain drain. Nigerian brain drain to America. Brain drain from Nigeria is the exodus of middle class and highly skilled Nigerians, which have been occurring in waves since the 1970s and 80s. After Nigeria gained its independence in 1960, there were four major contributing factors that led to what is called the first wave of Nigerians who migrated to the U.S. First, a trend developed of wealthy Nigerians moving to the U.K. and the U.S. for education, with a smaller number migrating for work opportunities. Second, the 1965 Immigration and Nationality Act made it easier for Africans to enter the U.S., resulting in a spike in Nigerian immigration. Third, in the 1970s, the Nigerian government was eager to support the educational attainment of its citizens and sponsored thousands of scholarships to attend American schools like UNC Chapel Hill, Yale, and Harvard. And last but not least, after becoming citizens, Nigerian Americans could sponsor relatives back home for citizenship. So again, first of all, you, you must give um, Nigerians props and any other immigrants that come to the United States because when they're coming over for the majority, they understand that, you know, that they need to basically to do very well. They're gonna need to get into the educational sector. Most immigrants, that's their way to the top. So it's gonna be preached in their culture to do so. But he also talks about the brain drain that is also experienced in Nigeria. I've lived in Poland, and I've now lived in Uganda, okay? Now, I went to undergraduate at California State University, Sacramento. I went to medical school and I work a lot. I most likely work more than the average person in Uganda, okay? I've worked every day this year. Now, why is that the reason? Because I have to. Now, let me talk about this particular clip that this sister's gonna talk about how black Americans are lazy. I'm not gonna lie to you, I honestly feel like people that come from third world countries, they come and bust their ass in America. Our people, black people, they chilling, taking cigarette breaks, where the people that come from different countries, they in there busting their ass. And it's hard to really find workers like that. Just in today all together, America all together. Now, just like how she says, hey, the immigrants be over here working real hard and black Americans don't be doing much. Well, let me just say from my point of view, when I'm here in Uganda, I don't have a choice. I have to do things the right way. I have to work hard. You know, I have to look at all the advantages that I've had in my country, whether it's, you know, skills and business that I may have had and all that to do very well, okay? Now, the same thing happens when immigrants come to the United States. Most people are gonna be more motivated than Americans in general, and obviously whatever skills they have coming from someplace else, they, it, it, it will help them when they come to the United States. And the reality is that almost every immigrant that comes to another country is more motivated than the citizens of their group. Now, am I making excuses for black Americans? Do we leave a lot of opportunities on the table? Yes, we do. But I can tell you, if you take the top 30% of African Americans and they move to any African country, the reverse will also be true. And, and, and the reality is, when you're forced to perform out of your comfort zone, where it's live or die, you're gonna do very well, all right? And that's the reality. And also, when we look at the destabilization of these other groups in comparison to us, when I come to Uganda, it's not like I have an issue with what has happened here historically. And do you wanna know why? It doesn't affect me historically. I don't understand that historically. That's not the problem that I have faced historically. So when I come to Uganda, that, that's not gonna affect me as it, it may have an, a local Ugandan. But when, when people come to America, their trauma that they have in the country 
if it's there, doesn't affect them. They don't have a negative outlook of the country. Just like I don't have a very negative outlook um, about what I can do here in Africa, which is the reason why I tend to do very well here. You know, so there are many things out there. And I would say that top performing people of any race do very well and have good habits. And you can find, just like in America, you can go to Nigeria and find the people not performing very well. You can come to Uganda and, and find the same thing. You can go to Poland and find the same thing. You know what I mean? So that's just me. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Which is for all you do, subscribe to the bell, we're out. Thank you.